What's up, Night Owl? Still here back with another Verlant review, and this time we're having a look at Celasta, Crown of the Magister. It's been so long since I've done a video game review. It felt really good to say that line again. For those of you that don't know, I used to do video game reviews on this channel when I first started out, and I kind of migrated to D&D, and D&D kind of took off, but I really enjoy doing the, the video game reviews. So every once in a while, I'll get an email requesting that I review a product or that I'll make a video on something. And most of the time, I'm not really interested. I'll just kind of gloss over, uh, gloss over those. But one that stood out to me that I got the other day was from the team over at Celasta. And the reason this email stood out to me is because I was already playing Celasta at the time and I was really enjoying it. So the idea of actually doing a, a game review on it and actually getting my very first paid sponsored video hype that seemed really cool to me it was it was kind of a big deal like finally having that moment it almost feels like validation like what i'm doing is actually like i'm getting somewhere with this channel it's it's always a good feeling when you get that when you get that sort of validation granted the subs and the views and the comments and the likes all mean a great deal but when a company actually reaches out to you and it's like hey will you show this to your audience that felt that felt really good. But we're here to talk about Celasta, not the channel, so let's talk about it. The thing that I absolutely love about this game is how close it is to actual Dungeons & Dragons combat. The folks over at Celasta got a license to use the Dungeons & Dragons 5.1 rule set, which is entirely lost on me what that means, but apparently they can actually use some rules and some classes and races from Dungeons & Dragons and actually incorporate them into a video game, and they did a fantastic job at that. Normally, when I want to play a turn-based tactical RPG, my go-to is Final Fantasy Tactics or Baldur's Gate 3. Celasta has been added to my go-to list because of just how well it incorporates the D&D rule set. I mean, the combat feels exactly like a D&D game. With some restrictions, mind you, because this is still a video game and it does have those video game-like restrictions that D&D doesn't have to worry about. For example, readied actions, when you're in combat and you want to ready an action, you can't really specify very much. You, all you can really do is choose whether to cast a spell as your readied action or to attack or to a ranged attack. It's very limited on what you can do with readied actions, and that's just, that's just inevitable with video games as in their current state. The game does have some advantages on a tabletop role-playing game, like the fact that you're looking at a screen and you have graphics. So there's an emphasis on three-dimensional combat because you can actually scroll a camera. Uh, a camera also the spells are really flashy and beautiful and I, I really love the the spell effects of this one they make even the simplest cantrip like flame bolt really stand out i'm putting so much emphasis on the combat in this game because that's where you're going to spend a majority of your time and thankfully that's where you'll have the most fun when you load up the game and choose new adventure you're going to be given the option to select one of five difficulties and you also have a checkbox for iron man mode which says that only the latest save can be loaded and all saves are destroyed if the group is defeated and you cannot be in that option can't be changed during the game you also be given the option to set up your four-man team. Now, when I started the game, I played through it on authentic mode, which is the default mode, and I built my team with a fighter, a cleric, a wizard, and a ranger. You have the option to create a character from scratch, or you can use one of the pre-generated characters if you want to jump straight into the game. Your race options when you create a character are human half-elf, two types of dwarves, two types of elves, and two types of halflings. Your class options at the time of recording are cleric, fighter, paladin, ranger, rogue, sorcerer, wizard. Next, you'll choose your background, which will give you access to these personality flags along with the alignment chart personality flags. And what these will do is you'll choose four among the list and these will affect how your character interacts with NPCs and with the other characters in the party. This is sort of uh, this is sort of building your character's personality and how they'll talk. And I got to say, they did a really good job at this. I really fell in love with how the characters turned out. I didn't spend a whole lot of time at character creation worrying about the backgrounds. I assumed it would be like D&D where they just give me some skills and a cool ability. I didn't realize these personality flags would have such a huge impact. The NPCs in this game are a little bit dull and the animations are kind of meh, but the but your party and your characters will really stand out and you'll kind of you'll really fall in love with them throughout the game as the as their personalities start to show. And this is all based on the flags that you choose at character creation. So don't sleep on those. And just like in a regular D&D game, you'll actually roll your stats out and determine where you want them to go. And if you're one of those people, you can just keep clicking re-roll until you get the stats that you want. 
Uh, you also have the option to point by, or if you're like me, you just went with a standard array, that's cool too. They do have the standard array. And I did that for all my characters. I'm not about to sit there and roll, re roll till I get straight 18s. And point by is not really my thing. So standard array is an option as well. You have all three of those. After that, you'll choose your skills and languages. Meh, these aren't really a huge deal. Um, some of the languages aren't actually used in the game, and they'll actually leave you a little note saying, hey, you can choose this language for role play purposes, but it's not going to show up in the game. They actually, they actually have a little marker for that, so that's convenient. After that, you'll choose your spells. If you're a spellcaster, you'll determine your character's appearance, and then it's on with the adventure. Well, if you're building your team completely from scratch, you're going to need to do that three more times, but it's not that big of a deal. Now, it is easy for me to recommend this game to somebody who plays D&D. It so closely matches the D&D combat system and character creation that at the time when my wizard and cleric were leveling up, I didn't even need to read the spells. I knew exactly what I wanted when I leveled up, and what was coming. At, at fifth level, I chose Fireball and Haste, and they worked exactly how I assumed they would. There are some examples where this is not the case. For example, Polymorph is not in this game, so my wizard was very sad at seventh level, but they did have banishment, so I was able to steamroll those elemental encounters with a upcast advantage. For someone who has never played D&D before, this, in my opinion, would be a great way to learn the game's combat system. Combat system specifically, role playing as a character and the skill checks and things like that, are, and maybe even character creation. You might be able to get pretty, pretty good at character creation with this game if you make enough characters and kind of pay attention to what you're doing. You could probably get good at that. In my opinion, character creation isn't that difficult, um, not even for new players uh, to begin with. But I believe that this game's combat system is so closely, um, so stay so true to Dungeons and Dragons combat that you could actually learn D&D &D combat with this game with, with some exceptions. Obviously there's some homebrew rules like flanking that the game doesn't use. And like I talked about with the ready actions, but for the most part, you can really get this down. You can understand how spells work. The, the, the game would be a great tool for that. And for those few people who are watching this video and don't play Dungeons and Dragons and have no interest in learning, I can recommend this game to you if you enjoyed Baldur's Gate 3 or Final Fantasy Tactics. Those games, I'm a huge fan of those two games and that turn-based combat. And this game stays so close to that and is so, so well done, and but stands out on its own that I can definitely recommend this game if you've played either of those two and enjoyed them. All right, let's talk about the bad. This game does have some graphical and animation bugs to it that mainly come up whenever you're doing, whenever you're having a dialogue option. I had not seen any bugs with the combat, and I've played this game for just shy of 50 hours. I saw some, I saw some Steam reviews mentioning combat bugs, enemies getting stuck, and uh, turns taking a really long time. I didn't experience any of that, and I spent a great deal of time in combat in this game. Um, again, just shy of 50 hours. Uh, I played this game, didn't have any, didn't have any bugs with combat. It was mainly like the camera kind of being wobbly during dialogue and um, some some like graphics disappearing and, and etc. The next thing is this game is very linear. There's no real branching off. The story goes uh, in one direction and you're following the trail. There are some side quests, but for the most part, those stick to the trail. There's very little branching off for these for these side quests. So it's it's a pretty straight line. Your decisions don't have a huge impact on the overall outcome of the of the story. Even the dialogue options will really don't um, the impact of a dialogue option doesn't really leave that that scene. You'll get some new you'll get some interesting dialogue based off what you choose. And a dialogue option may result in you getting in combat if you fail like a deception check. So not a huge impact there. It's again, it's a one one track on the way to the end and your decisions have very little impact, very linear. The next issue I have with the game is the story. The story isn't very gripping and it takes a very long time for it to really pick up and to grab you. And even then, it's not a very tight grip. Uh, at the very end, like the very final chapters, I got more and more invested in it. And by the time that I was like fully invested into the story, the, the campaign was ending. There is a really cool twist close to the end of the game that I won't spoil here, but that was definitely the most involved that I got with it after this, this kind of twist and everything got flipped on its on its side again won't spoil it but there was there was a, a vested interest in the story at that particular point point. and if you played through the campaign you're going to know exactly what i'm talking about the rest of my complaints are really nitpicky we're missing a couple of the D, D classes like the artificer the barbarian 
uh, Druid, Warlock, Monk. Uh, like you only have the classes that I listed earlier. They did just come out with Sorcerer. Uh, I didn't get to I didn't get a chance to play the Sorcerer because I had already built my team when it came out. But I'm definitely going to be doing a new playthrough with a Sorcerer, Paladin, Rogue, and of course a Cleric because I can't let go of my Cleric. And so yeah, so there's a lot of classes missing. There's a lot of feats that are missing or renamed. Uh, so there's that. A lot of spells are missing too as well. I mentioned Polymorph. Also, no multi-classing. So if that's your thing, keep that in mind. That's not available in the game at the time of recording. And the last thing that I want to talk about is the Dungeon Maker. Now, this thing has a pretty steep learning curve, but if you're willing to put in the hours, you can come up with some pretty amazing things. The Dungeon Maker essentially gives you a, a map that you can build a dungeon on and set up encounters, and the party can just uh, can par the party can progress through, and you can actually upload it to to the Steam Workshop where other players can download it and rate it. And they've put some pretty awesome stuff up there. So over time, as the as the game has more updates and as players have get a, get a hold of it and play through and, and create the and go through the Dungeon Maker, you can actually find some pretty amazing stuff within the workshop and more to come, obviously. So that's it. That's my review for Celeste. I really enjoyed this game. I highly recommend it. It's a no brainer if you enjoy the D&D combat system at all. If you enjoy that tactical turn-based um, RPG style like Baldur's Gate or Final Fantasy Tactics, if you enjoy either of those games, you will love this game. And also if you enjoy D&D and the D&D combat system, you will enjoy this game. And if you've made it this far in the video, as a thank you, I'd like to hand out a few Steam keys for Celasta. The email they sent me had two Steam keys to use for a giveaway and one Steam key for myself. I already own the game, so I'm going to be giving away all three Steam keys. All you have to do if you want to win one of these Steam keys is to leave a comment on this video with the name of my dog within the comment. Shouldn't be hard to figure out if you don't already know it's in the description of every video. That's the only hint you're getting. And if you want to be a part of this community, make sure you join the Discord. Link is in the description. Come by, ask questions, let me know what you think. And as always, I'll see you at sundown.